is a historic night. REACT is a program that uh, has done so much for so many for so long here in Stanford and the state of Connecticut. It has brought hope and motivation and stimulation to a lot of young people uh, to help and give them a road map to attend college and succeed academically. And so we act as to be congratulated for the vision and for the road of hope that it has traveled all of these years to end up with the vision that will take these young people to higher heights in the academic world. <laughs> This is one of our reasons. Uh -huh. This is my nephew, Shima. Shima, this is my baby. Say, hey, how you doing? This is my nephew. I'm happy. All right, that's how you do. It is a privilege to extend my words of tribute to all. Please know that you have my best wishes for a wonderful and memorable evening and continued success in the future. Sincerely, M. Jody Rao, Governor, State of Connecticut. Now, to my knowledge, Angela is a, you are a gift of the city of Stanford, are you not Angela? Because, you know, she's been here so long, I'm just going to claim her to be Stanford, Stanford, Stanford. So it's just as well that the mayor of the city of Stanford sent a proclamation. The proclamation reads, whereas in 1986, the William E. Edwards Annual College Tour We Act was developed and implemented. We Act provides college tours for Stanford students, including the students who lack interest in pursuing a post-secondary education and may not have been exposed to historically black colleges, universities, HBCU, and whereas in an age of spiraling costs where college education may not seem to be an attainable dream for many youths, especially those affected by their family, socioeconomic situation, and whereas over the past 20 years, WEAC has taken over 1,000 students to a host of historically black college university campuses throughout the South, exposing the students to the college experience. And whereas, statistics show that 87% of the WEAC participants have pursued an institute of higher learning. And of those 87%, 58% selected a historically black college and university. And whereas the college tour has developed into a diversified organization allowing for all students to participate in the college experience and in preparation of making one of the most important decisions of their life, we act will stay committed to all youth and the importance of education. Now therefore, I, Michael A. Pavia, Mayor of the City of Stanford, do hereby proclaim Friday, October 15, 2010, to be We Act Day in recognition of the William E. Edwards Annual College Tour that has provided an opportunity for all students to participate in college campus visits. We recognize the positive impact this organization has made in an attempt to expose young people to a college experience and encourage them to achieve their highest potential, their highest potential. Thank you. Good evening, everyone. Um, we would like to thank the Turner Construction, Xerox, Stanford Neighborhood Housing Service of Stanford, Stanford Education Foundation, NAACP, and last. Can everyone stand, please? Special guests in here tonight. He is the last one of the last. He is the last man from Tuskegee Airmen, Lieutenant Colonel Carter of the Tuskegee Airmen. So we want to acknowledge him. Ladies and gentlemen, this is the last lieutenant. Come on, yeah. We need to hear a long, loud, loud of applause here. It is good seeing you. This is I, this is how important this was. When I when he came up, my cousin Chris Long brought this this wonderful gentleman and this beautiful bride over. And I said when I came up, I was like, uh, what is that? Wait a minute, Tuskegee Airmen. 
I am proud to be in your presence. Absolutely. So at this time, thank you, ladies and gentlemen, for your recommendation, for your recognizing of my service. I'm Lieutenant Colonel Floyd Carter. I'm one of the original Tuskegee Airmen. Yeah. I've served in the United States government for 31 years. I started out in 43 when they said, and this is what our government said at that time, in 1941, they said Negro men did not have the intelligence to fly military airplanes. They say we didn't have the coordination. And to add insult to injury, our government said, the War Department stated, that Negro men could not even be taught to fly military airplanes. This was in 1941. Eleanor Roosevelt talked to her husband, and her husband decided, ordered the War Department to build a field to teach Negro men to fly military airplanes. I was one of those men. You've seen the record of the pilots, Tuskegee Airmen, You've seen the program. You've seen the pictures. I don't have to tell you about that. But I will tell you about my experience. I was one of them. They said we couldn't be taught to fly military airplanes. In 1970, I went to jet school, became a jet pilot, of one of the most modern airplanes in the United States Air Force, the C-141. I graduated, this was in 1970, and when I came back to my service, the Air Force appointed me as the first black commander of a four-engine jet squadron in the history of this nation. Right. It gets better. Yes. <laughs> Hear this. A jet squadron or an Air Force squadron is made up of 65 officers, that's pilots, co-pilots, and engineers and low, uh, pilots, co-pilots, navigators, and tactical officers. 65 officers. The squadron that I came command of, the 732nd Military Airlift Squadron, had 65 officers. Get this. Sixty-four of those officers were white. The sixty-fifth officer was black. That's me. I'm as black now as I was then. But here's the key. Out of those sixty-five officers, sixty four were white, the 65th officer was me, and I was the commander. For four years, from 1970 to 1974, I was the only black officer in that squadron, and I was the commander. They said in the beginning, that Negro men could not be taught to fly military airplanes. They say we didn't have the coordination. 
They said we didn't have the intelligence. But in 1974, as a commander of that squadron, I was teaching those white officers how to fly those military airplanes. I was teaching them how to fly it all over the world. So the ones that couldn't be taught were finally teaching. After four years as a commander of that squadron, when I took it over, it was rated number three. When I retired four years later, it was rated number one. one person and anyone seeing this please support this a great cause wonderful and goes far congratulations congratulations we have great job best of luck congratulations on a great job Congratulations to WEAC. Uh, I'm from North Carolina A&T State University, uh, HBCU, and so my congratulations to all of you. Um, one bus, many tours. Congratulations. I was a participant on the WEAC um, college tour trip. Uh, I was glad for the opportunity to go to Lincoln and play the piano, and um, they wanted to sign me, but I don't think I'll be going to Lincoln. You know. And I thank her for the opportunity because, you know, it gave me exposure, it gave me that, that, that feeling, you know. All right. My name is Portia Wright. Hi, my name is Brittany Bryant. And I graduated um, just from Alabama A&M University this past May 2010. And I just graduated this May from Howard University, class of 2010. Um, and I would just like to thank Angela Edwards for um, giving us the opportunity to go on this We Act College Tour. We learned so much and we met so many great people and it was a great experience for us to learn about HBCUs firsthand and we just pray um, and just hope that Angela is blessed and allowed to take more kids on a college tour because it's a great experience and we love it. God bless you, Angela. Something to him. I left you a message on, on the thing. Oh, did you? Yes, I did. Okay. Did not leave her a nice message. Excellent. He message. said it was, he was about to cry. It was so oh, sweet. Oh, no, don't have me fooled. <laughs> no, it wasn't. It wasn't that bad.